Welcome to Atlantic Sun Media Day. I'm your moderator, Andrew Kappas. We're joined here by the men's basketball head coach here at NKU, Mr. Dave Beasel. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. We're very excited to you know, get started in this new conference and this new endeavor moving into Division I. And I know the campus and the university and you know, our, our programs are very excited. Now, your first career game as a head coach at any level, or at the NKU level, excuse me, is, uh, was at Rupp Arena against Kentucky in an exhibition game. Obviously, a, a great atmosphere. Uh, now, that's going to become quite the norm. Obviously, not Rupp Arena, but you guys move up a level to Division I. Uh, what kind of changes is that going to bring for you? Well, again, what it'll do, uh, it allows us to go to different cities and play unique s s situations and give our guys just tremendous experiences like going to the University of Kentucky. And instead of them being exhibitions, be actual games on their schedules that you know both teams prepare for and, and things like that. So it, it's going to be a tremendous step up um, in, in play. Um, also, it gives us ourselves more instead of a regional feel to more of a national feel for the, the program and trying to ex expose ourselves nationally that way with our program. So we're very excited about what the Division I jump and transition is going to do for us. Now speaking of the schedule, a, a very neat looking schedule you guys have. You go out to San Diego to begin the season, so racking up the uh, frequent flyer miles there early on in the year. Yeah, we are. It was one of those situations where you know we had to try to find the games that we could play and, and games that people would let us play. And one of them that was uh, put that one of the situations we were able to get was uh, a trip to San Diego. We've never been that direction um, to play four quality programs um, so early in the the season seemed to be a, a great opportunity for us. And to have our kids play four games in five days is a, a tough stretch, but it's something that, you know, you want to put your, your kids in situations like that to help them grow, to help the team grow, and we're very excited about that opportunity. Now, a game that a lot of Norse fans and just fans around the region, basketball fans around the region in general, are really excited about is that December the 1st trip to Ohio State, a, a really big game on your guys' schedule. Yeah, it is, and it's something that, you know, we, we, we've talked about for a long time. Hey, if this happens, we make that move to Division One. What we want to do is grow this program up, and, and the other thing we want to do is every year have a marquee name, a marquee program, um, a, a team that historically is, is one of the top five, ten all, of all time. And to say the Ohio State University is on our schedule um, just does a tremendous amount. It excites the alumni. It, it excites the community. And you know what? Our, our players better be excited because it's a, it's a great opportunity and challenge to go up there and have the opportunity to, to see what the top level programs are and where we want our program to get to eventually. And you guys also have a, a couple of other big name schools on your, on your non-conference schedule as well. A trip to Texas Tech in Lubbock, Texas, as well as a season ending trip to San Francisco. So uh, just really all around a nicely, uh, nice schedule for Norse fans to look forward to. It, it really is. My assistant Kevin Chappelle did a heck of a job in, in a tough, tough situation putting this schedule together. And the, the opportunities that presented themselves um, were really worked out well. And to have the opportunity to go to San Francisco at the end of the year, um, sort of like a bowl game where it's a couple weeks, week and a half after our season concludes, conference season, but to have that sitting there and give our guys another great experience to see, you know, one of the top cities in the world and to go out there and, and to play a, a program like San Francisco that was historically such a big component of NCA at the, at the beginning of it um, is going to be a tremendous opportunity for us. Now you guys moved to the Atlantic Sun, obviously not eligible for postseason play or the postseason tournament in the Atlantic Sun, but you will play a full conference schedule this season. Uh, NKU slid in and took the place of Belmont this season, but Atlantic Sun, one of the best mid-major conferences in America and uh, just a really deep overall basketball conference. It really is, and, and going into it, I didn't know you know that they were ranked and had the quality wins in programs that they had you know we just heard that name and we're thinking uh the other conferences are stronger because they're in the midwest or the this then when you look at the numbers i believe there's 31 32 conferences in the nation and they're ranked 16th or 17th in men's basketball which is tremendous when they're ahead of the sun belt um, the OVC and some other, you know, very good, very good conferences. So it, it's a tremendous, it's a tremendous conference. It's growing with a young, a lot of young programs that are in their first, second, third year of, of Division One, full Division One membership. And so I, I think it's just a heck of a conference to jump onto and to help our progress and to growth also. Now turning our attention to the Norris, this year's team, uh, a lot of returning talent and a lot of senior leadership as well. Uh, obviously Ethan, Ethan Faulkner, the big returning senior, uh, Stretch, Watson, Stretch Watson as well. Uh, just talk about some of the key returners on this team. Well, we've got 
four or five young men have played you know significant minutes last year um, starting with the seniors Ethan Faulkner has been a tremendous leader for us and has really developed into a, a very fine basketball player and we're going to he's going to have to you know do the same things that he's done the last three years with us Ashante Jones has been a tremendous addition last year to us he's a 6'5 shooting guard that hit some very big baskets last year and probably the most memorable against the division one phone opponent was against West Virginia to win the basketball game and, and so those those are two um, very key components at, at the guard position and then Ernest Stretch Watson who's just a, a tremendous energy guy is really really developing into a, a fine player also and then uh, Chad Jackson, who's the fourth member back from last year's team that played a lot of minutes in big games and big moments, um, has really done a nice job this year, uh, adding some strength and developing his his overall game. Um, and we're going to have to look for Chad again. He, he's like that utility infielder in baseball, does a little bit of everything. Um, offensively, to do some things, offensive rebounding, keep the ball, distributing the basketball. He handles the basketball a tremendous amount of time for us in, in what we do. And then defensively, um, to really become a guy we can lean on to be a lockdown and, and take a mindset of a lockdown defender because of the talent that we're going to see at the perimeter position. Um, maybe we're asking too much at this stage of the game for a little bit of them, throwing them out there, but it, it's what we've got to do. And then the last gentleman is back with us. Um, it had some playing time you know as a freshman last year some meaningful minutes of time but we're looking for a lot of growth this year is Jalen Billups um, so we, we think he's gonna really be able to do some nice things for us this year. Now you mentioned Jalen Billups so just a freshman last season I went through a lot of growing pains especially early on in the season but became into his own uh, toward the end of the year made a lot of progression that we could see just from the sidelines and I'm sure you could see from the bench so what kind of things are you looking are you looking forward to from Jalen? Consistency, and that's usually what you see freshmen don't have. Uh, very few come in and are consistent with their play the entire year. And Jalen was just a, a typical freshman. He'd show spurts of uh, very fine play, and then he'd show some spurts where you, you're wondering, you know, it, it, the development wasn't there, consistency. So the consistency offensively and defensively for Jalen is going to be um, very, very important for us this year. Now you have a few guys on your roster that do have previous Division I experience. So Chad Jackson played at James Madison, Bear Jones, also a Division I player. What's it like having those guys that have had that D1 experience at a big level uh, to have for the guys that maybe haven't played Division I basketball yet? Well, I think that we, we have so many new freshmen that, that, that just college basketball is different for them, and they've got to realize that. Um, if we start discussing throwing all the D1 stuff that those guys' experiences have, I don't know if they'll be ready for that yet. But it's, it's one of those things they know from being there, um, the talent level that's there, the, the, how hard you've got to play and compete all the time, and how much better your focus and everything has to be, especially when you go on the road. That, that's, it's probably a completely different animal that way. So, you know, what we're going to have to lean on from those two guys that have been there um, is just some of that. When, when the practices aren't as, as good as they need to be, they've got to be able to step up and say, look, and, and take over and show some of that leadership um, that's going to be very, very important to help us through this. Now, you haven't had a whole lot of practice time with this year's team, uh, but you mentioned a lot of freshmen coming in, a lot of talented freshmen coming in. Uh, what, what can we expect as Norse fans from those newcomers? Well, the newcomers, the, uh, again, they're freshmen, so you, you don't want to, you're excited about them in a way, but you know it takes time. Um, it gradually takes time, and, but what they are, they're very coachable young men that are going to work hard. And whenever you get that combination, you feel good about them. And are they going to have, at times, not look like it, that they're developing? Yes, because they're freshmen. But I do believe that this group, because of their work ethic and the guys that are in front of them, the leadership that's in front of them, it, it's really going to expedite you know, their progress, which we're going to need them to do. Because, like I said, we've only got four or five guys back. And so that depth and some other things are going to have to come from some very young kids that haven't been out there and counted on yet. Coach, thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to seeing you on the sidelines this season. Thank you.